So as professional sellers, we've got to ask ourselves, how do I give? How do I give something of substance that makes the person say, you know what? I want to speak with you again. You gave me something. You gave me value, whether it was a new idea, whether it was a new process, whether it was a new connection, whether it was something that just added value to my life. If you didn't give me anything, you might as well have taken away. Conversations are at the heart of everything we do. But how do you turn a conversation into revenue? Welcome to B2B EQ, a podcast from Unifor. I'm your host, Tim Harris. Join me as I interview business leaders and market makers to learn how to move deals forward, scale best practices, and establish relationships that create value and grow revenue. Let's get started. Welcome back to this episode of B2B EQ, and we're going to jump right into it. Today's guest is extremely passionate about coaching and helping sales professionals and leaders take their game to the next level. An experienced sales leader who understands many of the challenges faced by sales professionals and leaders today, host of the Midweek Midday Motivational Minute, author of Jolt, and Salesforce top voice three years in a row. Mr. Larry Long Jr. Larry, how are you, sir? What, what's what's going on, Tim? I'm happy to be here. Super excited. Thank you for that amazingly kind intro. The check is in the mail. Wow, you said all those great things about me. You got a brother blushing. Hey, well, you know what? I got to say, you made an impact with me when we were in Nashville. It goes back to and I, and I got to give out a shout out to my friends at Ambition because they're on the coaching and making sellers better. Right. And and we met because of that event, but a lot of fun in Nashville. And now I couldn't think of somebody better to talk about motivation because to me, where the market is today with how tough it is to sell, how do we light that fire in ourselves? How do we light that fire in our sales teams to come with passion and really motivate ourselves day in and day out? That, that's, that's the million dollar question, Tim. And I'm super excited that we're having this conversation because guess what? Someone, and I'll say someone's, needs to mm -hmm. hear that right now. It's true. It's harder than ever. I'm watching deals move back. People are having to take a, a $60,000, $100,000 deal to a CFO. It, nobody's paying attention. Getting somebody's attention is harder than ever. What are some of the things you're seeing out there? And you know, where's motivation play into all this? Well, well, Tim, to, to answer your first question, hold up. Yep. Someone's knocking at my door and that person is opportunity. That's what I'm seeing in the marketplace. I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. So there's a narrative that woe is me. Everything's blowing up. I mean, I know you're a hornet. We got murder hornets. We got war. We got banks falling, falling off. We got yes. global pandemic. Yes, I'm going to admit stuff sucks. There, there's some sucky stuff. But I'm also going to admit if you keep your eyes and ears open, the opportunity is surrounding us. If you don't believe the hype, I'm going to say it's fake news that there's no opportunity out there. So what I'm seeing is there's two sides. There's yeah. the one side that's looking for every excuse why they can have success. And there's the other side that's saying, you know what? Now is the time for me to build my skills. Now is the time for me to strengthen my community and strengthen my partners, my partnerships, my relationships. Now is the time for me to get creative and think about how I can serve new clients because they're going through some stuff as well, as well as our existing clients. So if you keep your eyes and ears open and the lines of communication open, in the words of the great philosopher, J.J. Walker, that's what I'm saying. But it's true. My, my question, Tim, is which camp, and I'm getting choked up, which camp do you belong to? I hope it's not this first camp of, oh, yeah, I can't have success. I hope it's the second camp of, I will have success. Because you know what? Tough people over the course of time, over history, have always prevailed over tough times. You're spot on. And I, and you know, eternal optimist here, right? The glass is always half full. And so when I think of it, I think it's not that, yes, it's tough, great, but it's what worked in the past isn't working today. 
And as you start changing things up, right? I, I give an example to an older generation. My dad will say, hey, get on the phone. Give me a call. I'll be texting. We're still communicating. It's still great. Maybe you can't get on the phone call as often. But the way we communicate has changed drastically from what that generation grew up with. The way the last 10 years of selling has been going on is changing. You, you focused on community. Where are you seeing sellers win in today's market? What are they doubling down on? They're doubling down on that person in the mirror. And I'm being honest with you. Yeah. They're doubling down on their skills, their fundamentals. And by fundamentals, I'll, I'll take you through, I'll, I'll take you through a, two acronyms that I have. The first one is EPIC. The E is entrepreneurial spirit. Yep. As a salesperson, I might get paid by my company, but I better run my LLC like it's my business. And by business, I mean entrepreneurs know you get out of it what you put into it. The P is preparation and planning. I don't know if Alan Iverson is listening, but we're also talking about practice. For yeah. those listening, for those tuning in, those watching, when was the last time you practiced? And I mean serious practice, that uncomfortable, hey, let's pick up the microphone and let's role play practice so that when the lights turn on and it's game time, I'm ready, really ready. The I, internal drive and desire. Are you hungry? Not are you kind of hungry. Are you hungry to have success? to be excellent. The C of epic, I'm a quadruple click on you. I might even give you a bonus. The first one is communication. And yes, we've got to rock the mic, but sometimes you've got to shut the heck up and you got to listen. Quiet, please. You got to give the microphone to your prospects, to your clients. You've got to ask the tough, sometimes uncomfortable questions. Then listen, communication. Hair. It's the give a damn factor. Pardon my French, but do you actually care? Because guess what? Your buyers, they can smell BS from a mile away. They can tell whether you care about them or whether you need some Tic Tacs because you've got commission breath, confidence. The great philosopher Kevin Hart says it best. Say it with your chest. Courage. How are you going to stay optimistic? How are you going to stay positive in the face of adversity? through the chaos, through the turbulence. And then we're going to talk about, we talked about care, self-care, but we're also going to talk about commitment. Are you really committed? I see some folks that I think they call it half-stepping. And in the words of the great rapper, he said, ain't no half-stepping. You're either all in or you're all out. You can't be halfway in. You're either all in to taking your skills to the next level, to solving problems for your clients and your prospects, or you're kind of dibble dabbling. And I don't have time. In the words of sweet Georgia Brown, ain't nobody got time for that. For someone who's dibble dabbling, I need professional sellers and professional sales leaders to help us get to that next level, no matter what the environment is around us. That's what I'm seeing. I think you're spot on. It, it makes it to where now you're an unbreakable sales organization because as, as I've seen, the ones that double down on relationships to start want to educate, want to build confidence in their buyers. I was on with Brent Adamson earlier this week and he said, you know what the biggest challenge is? Buyers aren't confident in their own decisions. Right. And you can't overcome that if the seller's not confident. Uh, 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 nah, I ain't messing with someone who's eminent horn. Uh, uh, nah, I need you to come in and know your stuff. And yep. you don't have to know it all, but you better know. I call these the five star. And I'm not even talking about basketball skills. I'm talking about professional sellers. You better know the company, your mm -hmm. company inside and out. The who, what, when, where, why, how. Mission vision, your principles, your core values, and you better be walking in those core values. The industry or industries that you serve, when was the last time that you read a trade journal? When was the last time you followed thought leadership and you actually took notes and then made action items on what your prospects and clients can be doing? What are the key learnings, takeaways, and actions that they can put into place to take themselves to the next level? Your product, Oh, wow. We're talking about product. If you don't know your product inside and out, Houston, we have a problem. The tools and resources. I'm going to do the discount double check like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. 
what's on your tool belt and how proficient are you at using those tools? I might have a hammer, but if I don't, ah, if I don't know how to use it, then watch out now. The last thing is selling skills, your time management, your prospecting, your mm -hmm. discovery, your demo, your objection handling, your negotiation, your pipeline management, your closing skills, your after post-close skills. How proficient are you? And if you're being honest with yourself, there's opportunities to improve. What are you doing with those opportunities to improve? Are you kind of di dilly-dallying? Or are you intentional about how you're up-leveling your skills? And that's just on the professional side. Don't get me started on the personal side, which definitely has an impact. And we're seeing it. We've been cooped up for what, the yep. past three years? We, we, we've been social distancing. We've had our masks on. That's had an impact on us, Tim. Uh, the best yeah. sellers are the ones who find a way to get out in community, to get out and chop it up, to share ideas. I just went to an event in person on Wednesday. Amazing. I learned so much, met so many great people, and I hope that I was able to serve someone with just one thing that would help them get to that next level. I, I love that. And I think there's a big place for getting out in person. Sure. But I got to say, there's some connectivity. And, and you and I sense it on this call, right? The energy in the room, you can, you can meet that other person in the moment. And it's fun. It goes back and forth. How can sellers create that energy in their sales calls, especially yeah. over video, especially over this medium? Hey, hey, Tim, you're already doing it, man. I can tell you you're standing up. In the great yeah. words of that philosopher, Bob, get up, stand up. That's a start. I, I hop on Zooms all day. Folks are sitting down. They're not on camera. They probably got their legs crossed, chilling at Club Med. No, <laughs> you better get in a good athletic position. Yeah. yeah, I know this ain't sports, but it's close enough. This is a contact sport selling is. I think they say B2B, to that's belly to belly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I can't get physically belly to belly, but virtually I can. I'm here. I'm engaged. I'm not. I'm not on my device. I'm not distracted. I, I turn the uh, I turn the notifications off, and I'm right here in our conversation. The next step. This is for sellers of all ranges, and I've yep. been told that I'm cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Hey, go on with your bad self. If you got it all figured out, then you do. But where's your mirror? When you look at that person in the mirror. I will guarantee you that if you smile, that person in the mirror is going to smile back. That's contagious. It I is. don't care if you can see me. I can turn my camera off. You can feel a smile. You can feel genuine enthusiasm. You can feel that I actually give a damn about helping, about serving, and about guiding you. That's what professional sales is all about from my perspective. Now, you don't have to have the same off-the-wall energy as me. Actually, I've been, I've been coached that, Larry, there's a time and a place. Sometimes you got, mm, you got to suppress it. <laughs> and hey, I'm a chameleon. Watch yep. out now. But you better be authentic. You better be you because people can, they can smell the BS from a mile away and no one likes that. You yep. can't be anyone but you. You don't want to be me. I don't want to be you. You got to be you. So that's, that, that's what I'm seeing. I mean, turn on the camera, get up, stand up, get a daggone mirror, and then be prepared. Come on now. I got my, you can't see, but I got my game plan on my whiteboard. I'm ready. Because if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So I encourage everyone to think about, if I were to fast forward three months, six months, a year and a half, what do I need to be doing now to be ready for what's coming up? What do I need to do to reinvent myself, to build my skills, to be ready? Because so many times we get hit with obstacles. We get hit with stuff and we're not ready. We're in, we're into survival mode. We're just, ooh, how can I survive? No, I'm trying to thrive. So I'm wow. preaching to the choir. That's what I'm working on right now, Tim. And for those that I coach, those that I train, that's what I'm encouraging them to do right now. What actions can you be taking? specific actions what can mm -hmm. you be doing so that in 2023 who you're going to be is your best self i i love it because i think so many people during covid said I, you know i got to deal with this video thing i got to deal with selling over zoom but you know eventually i'll get back out there i won't need to do this too much well hey reality check 
Reality check 96. We just did a recent survey. Thousand sellers and buyers, right? 96% of their organizations use video at some point in the sales process, period. It's not going away. Right. It's going to be here. And, and how do you thrive through it? How do you read the room virtually when your prospects aren't on video? How yeah. do you encourage them to get on video? How do you That's create that, that, that culture and that atmosphere, that expectation that in order for us to be successful, hey, Tim, I got to see your eyes. Show yep. me your eyes and I can help you. I can serve you. If I can't see you, man, I'm flying blind. And I don't, I don't like to be flying blind. That's not a good place to be. Oh, it's not. And, and I think it's interesting because what we almost do to ourselves as a seller, we throw those slides up on the screen or we throw the product up on the screen and then we're flying blind. That's right. The best sales call I had recently, the very best one. I was at the end of the call asking them to see the product. Never, never did they show me the product. It was a conversation just like this. I didn't feel interrogated. I felt like, oh man, this person's engaged. They want to help. They right. understood, like you said, they understood where our company sat. They understood what my role was. They understood, hey, are you a marketer that's trying to do these things? Because I saw what you're posting on LinkedIn. I see what you're doing. Do you believe these things? Yeah. Okay, well, this is what we're helping other people do. And I have not had a 15-minute sales conversation like that in... I can't remember the last time. In forever. Tim, that, that warms my heart. I appreciate you sharing that. And my encouragement, the, the reason why I get up so excited every day yeah. is that there is opportunity to help sales professionals be true sales professionals, to have those two-way conversations to solve big problems that people are trying to solve. And, and that's that's what I hope everyone finds is that that, that place where it's like, wow, I have the opportunity to serve Tim and his organization. I get to learn from Tim and hopefully Tim gets to learn from me and we're able to partner. And even if we're not, if I'm not the right fit, hey, Tim, let me connect you to so-and-so. Hey, Tim, have you thought about this, this, and this? That's what true sales professionals do. I'm not just trying to slang some software out of my trunk, just slanging software like see <laughs> no, I'm trying to solve problems. I'm really trying to, when I think about sales, I think we're playing matchmaker and don't call me Patty Stanger. I'm not the million dollar matchmaker, but I'm, I'm Larry Long Jr. We're matching our products, our service, our thoughts, our ideas mm -hmm. with someone else's needs, wants, desires, challenges, hopes, dreams, aspirations, problems, and it's so beautiful. Some people cringe at the word sales. They're like, oh, I got to go take a bath. Like, <laughs> no, I step into that and say, I'm a true sales professional. I'm solving problems. I'm serving people. I'm helping. I'm an educator. I'm a magician. Black magic. Watch out now. I, I love it because what you're also talking about is you're serving both sides of how we decide and how we make you know, choices in life, right? There's, there's a logical hey, this is the, the stats on the field. This is the specs of the car. This is the how it integrates, whatever. Great. Most sellers and most organizations lead there. But I think you're onto something about what actually drives that decision-making process, right? It, it, it's trust. Can I trust you? Do I believe you? Do I like you to a certain extent? And yeah. do I think that you have a solution to my problem so many times. I'll give you an example. I, my, my wife was pregnant. I'll never forget. And we were looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, the minivans. And I said, uh -huh. I've got a reputation, but essentially here goes what I'm solving for. I want to be able to put the pack and play in the trunk and be able to put my golf clubs in. We went to one place and they were trying to get me in a sports car. I said, dude, did you not hear what I'm saying? Do you not understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I, I know I talk quick, but come on, Cletus. <laughs> and he was like, oh, this sports car would look good on you. I'm like, come on, man. Don't make me knock you out, dog. You got to listen and yes. solve my problems. I want a partner. I don't want you on the other side of the table. I want you on my side of the table saying, hey, how can we convince Maria that, yes, you need to take your golf clubs whenever y'all travel with the little no. ones? 
I said, that's what I'm talking about, my man. There you go. Understanding that real deep need and the emotions to it, because this is all emotion at the end of the day. Those emotions are what drive, you know, the way we feel when we hang up the call. I always, I, I never remember what that person said. I always go, oh, you know, yeah, send me back that PDF on the product. But I can always remember how that person made me feel. Right. That's my Angelo right there. People will forget what you said. They'll forget yeah. what you did. They'll never forget how you made them feel. And it's, it's, uh, it's really about that connection. It's about relationship and it takes work. So there's a thing. I used to work for a company called Intuit and they called it the say do ratio. If you like say that. you're going to do something and you do it, you're batting a thousand. You're, you're 100%. But if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, that now becomes your say do do ratio when you're in the you're in the negative. That ain't a good place to be. So yeah. it's really making sure that people can trust you. They feel some sort of connection in that relationship is, hey, we don't have to be best friends, but I believe that you're on my side. You're trying to help me solve problems and you're not uh, a me monster just spitting up that commission breath where you don't even care about me, my organization, anything that's going on on my side. If you don't know what's important to me, then we're probably not going to work together. If yep. you haven't done your due diligence, if you don't at least come to the table with something and, and, and qualify it, hey, here goes what we're hearing in the market. How about you, Tim? Then I don't have time for you. If it's amateur hour and you talked about it, if you're just interviewing me, better go work for the Washington Post. Well, uh, tell me about, no, you tell me. It's got to be a two-way conversation. It's got to be a connection. Because it's like you said, and, and for a buyer, I can go, why is it that 44%, and I think Brent said even the numbers were wrong. He goes, now nah, when I left Gardner, it was higher numbers. But 44% of millennials don't want to talk to a seller. That's a crisis. That hurts, right? right there. Mm. That hurts because now if we're choosing to make those decisions, here's the flip side of that. Digital purchases have more buyer remorse than uh, sales-led purchases. They, they, they need us. They need professionals. But they so many us. have been burnt by the amateurs that are doing it wrong and don't add any value. Mm -hmm. If I hop on a call 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and you haven't added value, I probably won't do that again. With you, for sure. And with others, I'll be gun shy because I can't get that time back. So as professional sellers, we've got to ask ourselves, how do I give? How do I give something of substance that makes the person say, you know what? I want to speak with you again. You gave me something. You gave me value, whether it was a new idea, whether it was a new process, whether it was a new connection, whether it was something that just added value to my life. If you didn't give me anything, you might as well have taken away. You're a thief in the night. Stop from me. And I'm never going to let you do that again. It's true. You're never going to get that 30 minutes back. In reality, hey, we, we made that and bridges get burned so many times. I see more and more sellers getting that first opportunity. It's like first dates. Hey, I got a great first date ratio. I can get a lot of first dates. That's right. But can you get second and third dates? Can you that earn the conversation to continue on? That's right. That's I right. think that's an EQ thing. For sure. For sure. Uh, Emotional quotient is the ability to connect. And I don't know the Webster... Miriam Webster definition. But when I think about EQ, it's really, it's number one, understanding yourself. If you don't have any kind of self uh, understanding, you're going to be in trouble in terms of being able to have someone else understand you the way that you want to. So that that's what I think of. And it's so important. Some people call that the soft skills. Yeah, and I'm like, I pity the fool. <laughs> There's nothing soft about it. Those are hard skills. Most, I won't say most, I don't, I don't want to be generic, but there's a lot of folks out there that are lacking and have an opportunity, a huge opportunity area for improvement that will have a direct impact on results. That's, that's what we're talking about in sales. As a sales leader, I got three goals. Number one, hit my targets. Yep. That, that's, that's why I'm there. I'm there to put up numbers. Whatever those targets are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and hit them. Number two, learn and grow. I'm going to make sure that every day, myself 
as an example, as a leader, and my team are getting better intentionally. Just dibble dabbling. Number three, we're going to have fun. And if we're doing number one at a high level, number two, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And my question is, how many sales orgs right now are having fun? I'm running. The people that call me, they're not having fun. And I'm there to give them the fun back by focusing on number one and number two. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because when you're winning, life's good. When you're winning, things are fun. When when everything's spiraling out, hey, it it gets tough. And that's where you got to really dig in deep. But I think we go back to the well for the same things. I'm going to go back to that idea of like what's been working the last 10 years. Because I know as a marketer, you know, HubSpot did an amazing job with the funnel and the the gated content, the leads coming in and all that stuff. There's a lot of that system that's broken in marketing. I can only think that there's got to be a lot of that system. I worked in the sales engagement space, right? The spam cannons that we've got out there. Chat GPT just coming out. Is it because we go to the easy button? Is that the problem? Or are we just doomed to ruin everything? Oh, goodness. There's (laughs) There's a book by Rory Vaden called Take the Stairs. Yep. And uh, it talks about human nature to, yeah, boop, that was easy. We live in a microwave society, Tim. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm a hypocrite because I just microwave some leftovers, but we want things easier. We want it quicker. The, the, the true term of hard work, a lot of folks don't understand what that is. And my background is in baseball. I was a four-year starter at University of Maryland, go Terps. You can't see me, but I'm five foot nine and three quarters. I'm a little oh. dude. I round up to six foot, but I'm a little (laughs) dude with a big heart and a big work ethic. That's how I started four years in sales. I wasn't the best seller. I was probably the loudest, but loud doesn't, that that doesn't help you sell. Yeah. You got to learn. And, and you got to earn the right. You got to earn the right to have confidence, to step in that batter's box and say, you know what? I'm going to hit a hard line drive because you haven't outworked me. To hop on that call and say, I've studied your industry. I might not know it better than you, but I can, you're going to know that I put in the work. And, and I can now be confident about my abilities to have the conversation because I'm not flying blind. I'm not dilly dallying, dabbling at this. I'm a true professional and it just takes it to a whole different level. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's time for professional sellers to be professionals, to step our games up externally, internally, with our skills, with those around us. The opportunity is knocking. Who's ready to answer the door? That is the question. There's a lot of folks that are like, nope, not me. I'm comfortable. (laughs) I'm cruising. I'm not hitting goals, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Those people, hey, we can grab a drink, but you can't be on my team. I can't work with you. And really, I can't even grab a drink because I heard that that's contagious. That is contagious. That is contagious. That's what you don't want to catch, too. No, not at all. I'd, I'd much rather be Rudy in that in that equation all day long because that's who I think of too. I think of it's the person that wants to show up, be a part of it, and go and, and win together. Yep. Yeah, I got, I got, I got to put the barrier up. Mask <laughs> on. <laughs> much more contagious than the other things we've been fighting lately. Yep, absolutely. So, Larry, what keeps you up at night? I, I, I've got to ask. Like, what what are some of the challenges you see on the market and things that keep you up at night? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a business owner. I'm LLJR Enterprises. And Mm -hmm. uh, just like we talked about, am I doing everything in my power to grow? And uh, one thing I got to call this out. The question I have is, who's your coach for the sales leaders? Who's your coach? Who's coaching the coach for the Mm -hmm. sales professionals? SDRs, BDRs, AEs, Enterprise. Who's your coach? Who's supporting you, challenging you, helping you get to the next level? I invest in myself and I pay for coaching. Yes. It has been phenomenal. And I knew the power of coaching. I grew up playing sports. We always have a coach. Some are good. Some, eh, well, not so much. But for me, those coaches that are tough on me, that are challenging, that don't take my BS, that I try to tell myself and try to sell myself short. Oh, no, Larry. Now you're going to step into the highest version of yourself. And I'm going to hold you accountable for it. And if you don't step up, we won't work together. So essentially, who's coaching you? It takes an investment. Where are you spending your time? 
Are, are you spending your time investing in your learning and growth? Or are you doing the least amount of effort? Are, are you just showing up to practice when practice is scheduled? Or are you putting in that work afterwards? So for me, it's Larry, what are you doing to grow? And for me, I just brought on my first virtual professional. Uh, nice. Before that, I had three employees and you're looking at them, me, myself, and I, in the words <laughs> of De La Soul. But now I've got some help to help free me up, to give me a little bit of white space to work on the business instead of just in the business. And I'm not afraid of hard work, but I like working hard and working smart. Watch out now. So that's hey. where I'm at right now. How do I serve more people? How do I have greater reach, greater impact? And how do I grow my business? I love it. I love it. Now, what excites you for the future of the profession? Oh, my goodness. The, the future is bright because of the opportunity. And you talked about chat GPT. Yep. I am robot. <laughs> Some people are scared of it. I love it because for those that have the core fundamentals, for those that are able to do those ABCs, the basics, well, chat GPT is now going to help elevate them to the next level. For those that are lazy and say, oh, I just want to press a button and I'll let the robot do all the work, you're going to be exposed. You might be able to, it's kind of like in the, in the casino, you might be able to get away a couple of times, but uh-oh, snake eyes, you will be exposed in the long run. So I'm excited because the future is bright. And I'm also excited because there are folks that are hungry. There are mm -hmm. folks that actually care. I was on a bus tour last year with Keenan, with Beck Holland, with Guillaume, flipping the script, 12 cities, 18 days across the U.S. And that left me rejuvenated about this industry of sales, that there's professionals and leaders that are looking to get better. They're looking to serve. They're looking to help others to step their game up. Nothing gets me more excited than that. I think that's amazing. And I think in these transitional moments, right, it's like they always say, the way you get ahead is when you accelerate around to that turn, right? Like I've been watching that uh, Formula One show on Netflix and you, and you see it every time. Hey, when somebody goes down with a tire or whatever, that's when you get ahead. So like you said, the opportunity is knocking. Like this is when, if we shift our priorities, I think, to the human and we focus on the fact that, like you said, B2B is belly to belly or B to P, B, right? Business to person, because we're selling people, P buy from P. people. It's people helping other people. And yes. I got to give credit to Kevin Dorsey. That's, that's the first person I, I heard say P to P, people to yep. people. Good old KD, that's my dog. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So there's a unique DNA in people that I think have this passion, can bottle it up, share it with the world, and come come on a podcast, come on a sales call every time and always bring it. You're one of those people to me. So I want to know, okay, Larry, where'd this come from? Tell me a little bit about your backstory, where you grew up and kind of what got you to this point? My wife would say I'm from Mars, but uh, man, uh, <laughs> both, both my parents served our veterans in the VA. I grew up in VA medical centers and my father grew up in Baltimore City. Uh, track. He was a long jumper, triple jumper. That was his ticket out of the projects. He ran track at Maryland. My mom grew up in Baltimore County. They, I lived in the most loving environment and we didn't have much monetarily, but we were rich. We were overflowing with love and just care and just a lot of fun. I'm like my mom, my dad is more quiet. I lost my dad seven years ago, but I just have fond memories of moving around and my mom singing that song, make new friends, but keep the old one is silver while the other is gold. That's why I've never <laughs> met a, I've, I've never met a stranger, but yeah. uh, it, it was really just, just that upbringing, that environment. And uh, yeah, that, that was me. I've been on quite the journey. It's been a great adventure. There's been some misadventure in there, but I can tell you it's been fun along the way. And one thing that I've learned and I'm still, I'm 44, I'm still, learning that, hey, number one, don't be afraid to ask for help. I, I used to think I was Superman. <laughs> uh, I had a big it all ego. on your back. I can't ask for help. <laughs> That's weakness. Yep. Nah, you better ask for help because there's two ways to learn mistakes, which I made a lot of them. I got a hard head and mentors, coaches. They've already been down that path. And then the other one is there's no replacement for hard work. 
I learned that from my dad. It would snow. My mom's like, let's stay at home, shorty. That was his nickname. He was shorter than me. He's out there shoveling to get to work because he grew up with nothing. So having the opportunity to work, to take care of his family, that was his obligation. And to serve our veterans who served us, being able to see that. It wasn't what he said, but it was really, my mom used to say, your actions speak so loud. I can't hear what you're saying. So for a kid to be able to observe that day in and day out, it's like, and I wrote a chapter in my book, chapter seven, lessons from my dad. I would, it would be malpractice of me not to work as hard as I can. It would be all my dad's efforts. I'm looking at a, a quilt I have of pictures of my dad, pictures of me with my dad. It would be absolutely a shame and unacceptable if I didn't take advantage of being able to serve people, being able to help people, making impact over income. Now, income, yeah. got to keep the lights on. Let's keep it real. But absolutely. when you make impact and you're sincere about it, it's amazing how great things happen. I've been giving and giving and I continue to give, not in the spirit of I'm going to receive. It's in the spirit of I'm so blessed and fortunate that I can give. And it's just amazing how things work out. Everything takes care of itself. So I just encourage everyone else. You've got it inside of you. Be you, be authentically you, step into your inner greatness. Don't be scared. Don't be, don't play small. Go ahead and step your game up to the big leagues because you were built Ford Tough. And I'm not even sponsored by Ford, but <laughs> I heard it in a commercial. Hey, I like it. It goes with the lightning bolt too. We got the new EV Ford. If you're listening, get this man a truck, right? <laughs> so a little introspection here. Graduating from the University of Maryland, which by the way, business marketing, a little, little, little call out for marketing. Marketing and sales does get along, right? It's not oil and water. Right. Take me back in time just after graduating. What advice would you give yourself? Oh, my goodness. Yes. This, this, uh, this, this is a, a touching one. Believe in yourself, little Larry. Believe in yourself. There were times and moments. I worked at a company called Accenture. And I was surrounded by bright individuals, Ivy League. And I can't even spell Ivy. I'm working with Ivy League. And I, was, I was playing small. I played baseball in Maryland. I'm a student athlete. Oh, he's a dumb job. Nah, believe in yourself, Larry, and, and stay bold. In the words of Sarah Bareilles, be brave. Uh, that would be the advice that I would give. But looking back at it, I honestly wouldn't do anything different. Uh, every, I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. And those doors that shut, good. Because they allowed me to look for those windows of opportunity and taught me lessons. I think uh, they call it HKU, Hard Knocks University. I got my master's and my PhD from HKU. <laughs> I'm a turp at heart, but HKU, we're the hornets. There yeah, we those, were, those were some of the best lessons I had. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and outside of work, I know you're a big sports fan. I've seen the baseball bat. What do you love to do outside of work? What gets you excited? Oh, I love baseball. Yeah. But come on now. I don't know if you know this, but Tiger Woods is my cousin, Tim. Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Uh, now he's my play cousin because they call me Larry hit it in the woods. But <laughs> it's a bad dad joke, but I love to golf. I'm a terrible golfer. Actually, I'm hosting, co-hosting with Scott Lees, Jeff Bajork, Mike Simmons, our first event called Golf and Sales coming up in mid-April where we're, it's a mastermind retreat where we're talking about sales, entrepreneurship, personal growth, professional growth, and we're wrapping it all together with two rounds of golf out at Lake LBJ. I can't wait. The attendees are excited. I'm excited to learn from the attendees and my other co-hosts. That's that's the first of many more to come. And and I can only think not only a great experience, but so many parallels between right. sales and golf. I'm not going to go into all the corny ones, but I got to say, every time you're reading a putt, you just like reading the room, right? If you met, if you miss those cues, if you miss those breaks in the green, you end up all the way over here and back in the sand trap. And so uh, I, I think there's a lot of parallel there and a lot of fun. 
I'll be in Chicago around the same time. So I wish I could tee up with you, but uh, yes, very nice. Very nice. Well, you know, finish this up, Larry, where can everybody get in touch and, you know, give a shout out to not only that event, but, but where can we find you? Where can we get the book? All those good yeah, things. Yeah. The books on Amazon, please feel free to connect with me. Follow me on LinkedIn. I am maxed out on connections, but I love to connect. Send me a message. We can chat there, but uh, yeah, Larry long, jr.com Larry long, jr.com. I'm not hard to find. You'll probably hear me before you see me. But uh, whatever I can do to serve, whatever I can do to support you, please do not hesitate. That's a lesson that I learned. Don't hesitate to ask for help. We always tell these stories in our mind. Oh, such and such is too busy. Oh, I don't want to bother such and such. I'm telling you, bother me. It's not a bother. I would be honored and privileged to help and serve you. So I hope to connect with you. Awesome. Well, Larry, I, I got to say, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of B2B EQ. Thank you. I appreciate you, Tim. Keep shining bright. Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. Hey, thank you. And to all of our guests that are on today, I hope you learned something. I hope you're coming out of this inspired. You're lit up and ready to go and go attack the next week or the day that you've got in front of you. And until next time, Stay tuned for B2B EQ. Larry, it has been a pleasure, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Pleasure's all mine, Tim. Peace. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of B2B EQ. Be sure to rate, subscribe, and follow the podcast for more exciting insights. To learn more about the value of EQ and the technology powering today's conversations, visit us at unifor.com.